Peter. He is from Life Motions Technology. I won't do too much of the talk. I want to have him do most of the talking because it's a very interesting story and also a very interesting company. So without further ado, Michael. Sure. So my name is Michael. Uh, I'm co-founder of Life Motion Technologies. I'm also a PhD student here at Northwestern University. So the first question is how Life Motion Technology started, um, how you came up with the idea, how you did a lot of the research to get into that. Sure. So uh, I started as an aerospace engineer by training, wow. and I was doing my master's uh, down at Texas A&M. And then I got in touch with this person who was uh, a dental oncologist in India at Tata, Tata Medical Center, which is the biggest research cancer hospital in India. And he had this problem uh, called trismus, where p patients can't use their mouth properly due to the treatment of oral cancer, whether it be surgery or radiation. Um, so just imagine not being able to open your mouth because your muscles are too tight. Wow. Um, and he was just saying all the things I'm prescribing to my patients, there's nothing out there that's really helping them. And we got in touch and I decided to work on this in my free time, it was like a side project. And then we realized that we need to commercialize it to actually you know, make it a reality. And I started a company down in Texas and then uh, that's kind of how we started. Can you tell a little bit about why you came to Chicago from Texas? Sure, so um, Northwestern has uh, a strong partnership with the Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago. Now it's called the Shirley Ryan Ability Lab. And so a lot of the research happens right next to the patients. And I thought, um, since we didn't have the funds to move the company forward uh, at the time, uh, that I, I could moonlight the project, and uh, but learn a lot uh, okay. on the side of in assistive robotics. So I work with Dr. Argall. She's doing a lot of innovative research with assistive wheelchairs and assistive arms, um, so I can really enhance my skills as an engineer um, and also be involved in that space of rehabilitation. And can you tell us a little bit about how hard it was to get into the medical field, into the health field, with just funding and difficulties of getting into that field? Uh, it's quite difficult. I mean, there's lots of regulation. And there's a chicken and egg problem where people want to say clinical research before they give you money, but you can't get, do clinical research without money. Uh, things like that. They want some sort of proof and reduction of risk. Uh, so in that way, it's it's very difficult. Um, but there's a lot of money being spent on healthcare right now, so we're we're pretty optimistic that we'll be able to get this funding we want. Uh, right now, we were using uh, college resources uh, down at A&M to start off. So they have like a place called Startup Agulan, which is a little student incubator. They have some uh, small funds are tied into for students um, and then competitions that they helped us get into. Same with Northwestern, we did um, some competitions uh, that were, looking, were used to raise money and then you know, that's kind of just how we got started. So that's, that's pretty amazing. So you're, you came to Chicago a lot for the resources as well. Like I said, I'm a PhD student, uh, so majority of my time goes to that. You know, <laughs> I, get, I have a fellowship, so I get paid for that. So I, I have to make that kind of my daily priority. But at night, I'll put you know, a few hours in at night, um, and then I'll work the weekends on this project as well. Um, so until we get the resources to do otherwise, um, or we can expand the team, and then have other people work full time, something along those lines. Um, so how big did you say the team was right now? So it's a three person team. Uh, I guess two really working on it, one more of a, an advisory role. Um, we have one, we have me as the engineer, we have a, a law student, an MBA student, now he's just a practicing lawyer who kind of handles our operations and business side of things. And we also have a dental oncologist. Um, he's more of an advisor role right now, but he makes sure that all our research and engineering is, is clinically relevant. Have you kind of treated patients so far, or are you still in the research? Phase? I mean, I've only played with the device on myself. Okay. Um, so that's one thing we're looking for funding for, is to you know get these approvals to do this in a clinical setting. Um, the device works as is, we have it now. Uh, I have only been confident to test it on myself without making sure the legal paperwork's in place. Yeah. And for that, we're just trying to raise some money. Can you tell us a little bit about the device itself and sure. how it works? Sure. So, um, as I mentioned, the problem is that they can't open their mouths because of stiffness of muscles, essentially. So we've built what you can think of as a, like a stretching device, stretching machine for your jaw. And you wear it just like you would a pair of headphones. Okay. Um, and then you insert some mouth plates. And then there's motors that will actually perform stretching exercises for you in rehabilitation. Uh, move with your jaw in the natural way, um, and then track and improve, or track your improvement. See how uh, how often you're doing your therapy. Um, so, like, send the in information to insurance so we can justify reimbursement as well. That is really amazing. And then also, so you're a PhD student, which is pretty impressive, and you're running your own startup. Can you talk about what keeps you motivated as well, and just on a daily basis, what keeps you kind of grounded? The problem and the people we've met 
when we like we're doing our customer discovery is kind of what keeps me motivated. Okay. Met, meeting people with a problem and then knowing that they don't really have a solution. Yeah. Uh, it's not like we're trying to build a better mousetrap. Mm -hmm. In a sense, we are because there's like very primitive solutions, but they hate those and they mm -hmm. want something. And so that really keeps me motivated to keep working towards something. If there was one piece of advice you could give somebody, a young entrepreneur who's just starting out with uh, this brand new idea, yeah. what would that piece of advice be? Definitely talk to the people who you think are your customers. Um, one that helps ground your business and focus your business, but also for me it was motivating. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if there's a real need, then you, you you won't need to like put aside time. You'll find the time, mm -hmm. uh, and you won't find it difficult because you'll see the problem. It's it's right there. People are telling you repeatedly, so you find your motivation. Your business has focus, and you know exactly what to build. So I think just talking to customers at the beginning and throughout the process is the number one thing to be focused on. This is Michael from Life Motion Technologies. Uh, we want to thank you very much for coming down from your office, yeah. uh, from the lab, and helping us out with yeah. our research project. And um, we hope the best of luck to you with your research and your company as well. You're really doing amazing things. And um, just want to thank you again. So thank you, Michael.